So if you don't have clients, you don't have a business. And that is probably why the number one most asked question from all the social media managers I work with, um, the clubhouse members, it's always about clients. How do we get more clients? And so today I wanted to share three of my favorite proven ways to get more clients for your social media business. So the number one way, and it's super overlooked, and that's because it's so easy, it's to activate your in real life network. This can be your mom, your grandma, your aunt, the barista at Starbucks, um, people that you come in contact with every single day that know you, that want to lift you up, that want to help you. They need to know what it is that you do specifically and how it is that you help people and who those ideal clients are. And then you need to ask, outright ask them to send people to you if they know of anyone? Can they put you in contact with someone from their church? Can they put you in contact with the yoga instructor in their neighborhood? Who can they connect you with if they don't outright need your services that do need your services? We need to activate the people around us because they care about us and they want to see us succeed. We assume that because they know us and they know that what we, they know what we do, or we assume they know what we do. I don't think my mom knows what I do, that they're going to go out and like make that connection and send referrals your way, but many people that I talk to have never even asked the people closest to them, their friends and family members, to send ideal clients to them if they know of anyone. Once you put that little nugget in someone's head, it's way more likely that they're, they're going to come in contact with someone while they're getting their hair done and say, oh my gosh, my niece does that. I would love to put you in contact with her. Or, oh my gosh, that's something that, you know, my sister does. She was just saying how she's got open openings on her client roster. So I think we overlook it because it is so simple, but I think some of the very best referrals come from the people and through the people that we know and that know us best. Now, the number two way is sort of similar because it's also about your network. Um, and that is activating your online network. So different than the people that you actually actually know in real life or that you're coming in contact with all of the time. Um, these are people that you may not even really know in real life, but you're connected with. You're in Facebook groups with them, you're in engagement groups, or you're chatting with them on Instagram, um, you're tweeting at them. Like These are the people that you are connecting with and networking with online. And your virtual network is almost as good as your in real life network. That's because these people have seen you, they see you sharing value, you're adding to um, the group with your conversation, you're sharing your expertise, and you're becoming known for something. If you aren't doing that as a social media manager, let that be a lesson that you should be doing that. We should be showing up in social media networks, Facebook groups, online, and connecting with people and sharing value so that people can get to know us for something. So. That's not enough, just like it's not enough for your aunt to know that you do social media, like you work on the internet. So they need to know specifically what you do, what kind of services you offer, and who you do it for. So if you specifically work with like coaches and consultants, then you can let people know in your online network, like these are the kind of people I'm looking for. These are the kind of clients that I'd really love for you to send to me if you know of anyone who's looking for, you know, specifically Instagram or Facebook ads or, you know, email marketing, whatever service it is that you're offering, let them know that way you come top of mind, you become the, the thing that they have to share when someone asks them if they know anyone that does this. So essentially what you can do, this is a little bonus tip, for both activating your in real life network that you know, your real community, your family and friends, and activating your online network that you maybe don't know but you are connected with on social media and just online, you can offer them a referral bonus if they do send um, new contacts and client leads your way. So incentivizing and motivating with a little kickback, a percentage of the first month, um, whatever you want to do to sweeten the pot, I think that's great to do. What you want to do with a referral network is to consistently, maybe quarterly, as you look at your roster and you say, hey, I've got a couple of spots open, you're in my referral network, email them, slide into their DMs, however it is that you get in contact with them, and remind them that this is an incentive, I'd love to get like reward you for sending new business to me. And that's all you need to do, just on a consistent basis, add people to that network, say, I would love to share, if you're looking for new gigs, I would love to put you on my list of referred copywriters, you know, ad strategists, um, you know, photographers, content creators, graphic designers, web designers, developers. You can connect with people who are doing the same service as you. I mean, that's what the entire social media CEO clubhouse is about. I mean, we share leads. There's not, not everyone is an ideal client for every social media service provider. 
every social media service provider might eventually get to the place where their roster is full. They have plenty of work so they can hand work off to other trusted resources. So it doesn't just need to be people who aren't doing social media. You can connect and um, refer business to other social media managers as well if a client lead comes across your email that's not maybe ideal. But all of this boils down to the easiest, best way to get new client leads is through a network, whether that be in real life or online. And the reason for that is simple. It's because we love trusted resources. We wanna read the reviews. We wanna hear from someone that we actually know and like and trust that this is who they recommend. And so if you can connect with enough people who know what it is that you do and you're an expert in their eyes, you've, you're top of mind with more folks who can refer you in an authentic, trustworthy way to people who need your services. So it's a really good idea to make networking, connecting, and just all the time building up this referral network a part of your ongoing daily, weekly routine. And the final client finding strategy I'm gonna share with you today is not networking, but going for the low hanging fruit and finding opportunities that are already out there and that already exist on platforms like Upwork or Freelancer. These are freelance websites where people who are looking for projects um, to be completed, they're looking for freelancers and people who offer services like social media marketing um, to either complete a one-off project or ongoing, you, you never know. They're, but they're looking for people to do that and they're posting those job opportunities on places like Upwork. Now Upwork is one of my favorites just because it's one of the first platforms that I got on when I first started off as a freelancer and I set up my profile. So you want a profile set up 100%. And there are like so many opportunities on there for people offering social media services. Now I found one of my very best clients on Upwork or through Upwork. So I, it definitely can work. I know that um, it might not feel as like authentic or it might feel like you're just sort of like throwing your resume out um, into a billion different directions, hoping somebody will respond. But I promise you that the real businesses with real budgets are out there and they're using platforms like Upwork to try to connect with freelancers. They're using Upwork because it's a trusted sort of platform that's going to protect them if the job's not completed correctly, if there's an issue, and it protects you as a freelancer too to make sure that you're getting paid and that you're connecting with people who aren't going to bail on you. Yes, you do have to pay a little bit of a fee to do the work through that platform, but some people just really like it because that's where people looking for the thing that you're doing are already going to find people to do it. So Fiverr, Freelancer, Upwork, um, and Digital Nomad, there's a lot of different uh, platforms like this, but Upwork is one that I've had experience with personally and it does work. So if you're not using it yet and you're looking for clients, maybe your first client, or you're just looking to fill in the gaps um, on your existing client roster, it's a great place to look. So those are three really great ways to get your first client or your next or your 15th. You can always activate your network. You can reactivate your network. You can always go to Upwork. Um, you gotta do the work. That's basically what I'm saying here is that you can't just always wait for client leads to come across your desk. You have to go out and make that happen. So what are you doing today to get a new client onto your roster? I'd love to know. You can leave me that in a comment. And also, if you'd like even more strategies for finding clients, I've put together an ebook that is seven different strategies for finding your next social media client. And so you can just click the link and you can download that. So yeah, that's it. Happy hunting. And I can't wait to hear about your next successful client finding story.